Good morning, men. Uh, the enemy has declared open warfare on the sons of our nations, but as dads and fathers, we are not victims, but we are equipped and prepared for the fight. And part of the privilege that we get as fathers and as men is we get to equip the next generation and prepare them for the fight. Our culture is in steady decline, but you need to be encouraged that a surge is rising among the fathers and the sons, not just here at Grace City Church, but you're going to find out as well around the United States. Particularly, uh, there's, uh, we, got, we had some dads that came up for the, strong, for the uh, man card uh, from California and from Minnesota and for Georgia. If it, is anyone thankful for Georgia? I mean, yeah. <clears throat> and we are raising up a new generation of dragon slayer, slayers because it is time to be unburdened by what has been. <clears throat> Anybody know what the agogi is? The Agogi is the place where the Spartan men sent their seven-year-old boys to prepare them for warfare in protection of the city-state. We don't send our boys to the Agogi, but we do send them to the Inuit. And we have around uh, 20 of some of the greatest instructors from all walks of life. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're an instructor at Mancar, would you just stand up? Or if you helped at Mancar, I see Reed and Walker, all these men here from all walks of life, law enforcement, Justin Kissel, who was in charge of it all, Chris Foreman. Sorry, I'm not going to be able to name you all. Mr. Foreman, Lewis, and some other guy. Oh, oh, there's, uh, there was Frank right there. You guys can have a seat. Our job as, as fathers is not just to provide for our sons physically, but to specifically orchestrate challenges that will, by design, challenge them emotionally, physically, and spiritually. The most important thing for them to learn at this stage is that they have to get back up no matter what happens. And there are, there, these boys are presented with challenges that they have to overcome regardless of the discomfort, fear, or difficulty that they face. If they're given the wrong kind of challenges, the kind which demean or confuse them or break them, then they'll become the worst kind of man. And as fathers, when you raise your sons, you realize this inevitable truth that you are, in fact, raising your replacement, which is a scary thing. And as their fathers, it is our job to prepare them to encounter a world in which, uh, encounter the world in the way it is, not the way that we wish it would be for them. And ultimately, we are preparing our sons for the test. And it's a test that is in the future. It's a test that we cannot see yet. It's a test that's in the distance. And it's a test that's beyond our control and most likely beyond our intervention. And that's the way it needs to be. Because as fathers, we know that at one day the dragon will come and our sons are going to have to slay it and slay it on their own. Because ultimately manhood is a threshold in which you have to cross by yourself. But in the end, our, the goal is that they will be a man that is worthy of the love of a woman and that he will be the kind of man that she needs him to be and he will be the kind of man that his children need him to be and he will be the kind of man that ultimately our culture needs. Amen? So two weeks ago, Mancard uh, went through its third cycle and 20 sons and fathers gathered at the base of Stormy Mountain for a series of tests and trials and training in order to prepare these young boys to go through a rite of passage with their fathers where fathers can connect with sons and sons can connect with fathers. And these sons can be trained by some of the most uh, godly, courageous, and competent men that I know and am privileged to be around, some of the men that stood up here. And it was, it was uh, testing, it was trying, it was difficult, it was hard, it was rugged, it was cold. Uh, they got yelled at a lot. Uh, they were told to do a lot of physical things. Most of them were pushed to their, uh, their physical ability, uh, to their mental ability, to their emotional capacity, and all of them came through. Uh, and it was, it was so incredible to see the connection of fathers and sons. And when fathers are able to affirm their sons in front of other men, it does something in the heart of their kids, of, of their boys, that uh, nothing else can when they hear 
well done, my son. You're my son. I love you. And those sons had to accomplish incredible, uh, incredibly difficult tasks. Um, it, it was an unbelievable time. I'm grateful for it. It's a movement that's beginning, and it's, it's going to start spreading uh, across our nation. And so what I want to do is I want to help encourage you, and we're going we're gonna to uh, uh, see some testimonies today, three from men who are out of state. Uh, one, uh, Jeremy Absher, he's from Georgia, from our Grace City Church plant in Rome, Georgia. Uh, his son, Jake, came up. Another, Peter Gallo, and his son, Blake, from California. And another man, um, Phil Castle, and his son, Caden, who Phil was here, but then he moved, and he was in Minnesota, and he said, but that's okay, because I got to get Tim Waltz out of Minnesota. So we're glad, we're, we're glad he's out, he's over there. So we're gonna hear from that, and then we're gonna hear three guys here locally. Uh, we got a video for you to watch. Keith, uh, go ahead and roll that now. Hey, Stronger Man, it's Peter out in California. Back in June, my son Blake and I went out to Stronger Man Nation Conference. And when I got there, I was really in a bad place. I was discouraged, I, I was weary, I was beat down, and I had thoughts of, or. Yeah, I had thoughts of just giving up. My relationships weren't going that great in my home with my wife and my son. I learned from the conference that I had dragons in my home that needed to be identified and taken out. And they have since been. And I haven't been the, the same since that conference. The ability to, the opportunity to meet you men that are following Jesus that are setting that example in your own life was contagious to me. It meant the world to me and it was life-changing. I didn't know anything about man card at that time. I learned about it and by the grace of God, Josh invited my son and I to go. We just got back from that, that trip and it was life-changing. Both my son and I uh, put stakes in the ground and uh, we are pivoting in, in many ways in our life and more enthusiastic and encouraged about our faith than we have been since I can, I can remember. Um, Blake, is uh, uh, his shoulders are back a little. He's standing up straight. He's engaging at school. He's encouraging his, his friends. Uh, he's speaking better to his mom and his family. Uh, we are both coming together and starting a, uh, a men's group here at our local church stronger men's group at our local church that uh, hopefully gives us an opportunity to just share the love of Christ that has been demonstrated through the men of Grace City to us so we can share some of that around and spread it here in California because my God, it needs it. While the boys were gone, I realized, man, I had some work to do also as a dad. And I wasn't really thinking I was there for me. I was thinking I was there for my boy. And I quickly realized I need some help too. And being around you stronger men, I realized I was probably one of the weaker ones in the room. Uh, the way you guys manage your households and you're intentional with your boys and, and I just wanted to be more like you and uh, be encouraged by you and, you and you all did that. The hospitality of your church is incredible. Thank you, Josh, for the plan. I, I realized I didn't have much of one. Uh, after seeing yours, now I have a a detailed organized plan. My son and I are engaging together like we, we haven't in quite some time. Um, I'm praying with them. Uh, we're gonna do some cool things together like start a men's group with, with young men also to encourage them as well. Uh, we're gonna be in the word together more. And I have a clear set of priorities and goals that I'm gonna uh, maintain and keep up with on a quarterly basis with him while I still have him in my home. You guys were, were an absolute answer to prayer. And your attention to detail, the, the instructor's uh, knowledge, and the way you guys put together that course and every little, every little thing you did was just absolutely incredible. I, I just can't believe that I was so honored to be a part of that program. But I got to tell you, the best part about all of it was the people you guys are awesome. Thank you, and we love you. 
Hey guys, uh, I'm Jeremy Absher, Jake Absher's father. Uh, him and I recently came up and, and attended the weekend for Man Card. Um, just want to talk a little bit about about the experience, uh, what I saw, you know, come out of my son through the event, and some of the things that I experienced as a dad. Uh, I saw my son. Um, develop into a young man through one weekend uh, led by a, a elite group of instructors. Um, I saw those guys pour their heart and soul into these young men, uh, including my son, and, and those kids sucked it up. I saw them absorb all the teaching about um, even affirmation, adversity, um, you know, becoming a man, being a leader, being that protector, provider, being the lover above all. Um, I saw, I saw, I saw that in my son within a day of getting home. Uh, even during the the plane ride home, he he discussed many different things that influenced him and is still influencing him today. Um, I actually uh, got to have lots of great discussions with, with many uh, extraordinary fathers. Uh, some of those fathers, um, you know, battling uh, some, of those, some of those things that, that we all battle and them getting to see their sons go through, go through an event like this not only did something miraculous for their sons, but it also did something miraculous for them. Um, we know as fathers that, you know, we have to lead by example. Uh, we have to be that protector and provider. Uh, this event is a good reminder to men, uh, fathers and, and husbands, uh, the men that we're called to be uh, by Jesus. And um, uh, me personally, uh, just getting to have those discussions with the other fathers, getting to uh, having those men pour into me as much as I was pouring into them, uh, feeling the, the, the love um, that came from this event that, that was coming from every father there was just phenomenal. Um, and getting to see the fruits of, of all the labor of the instructors, um, it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal experience and I would highly recommend it to any of you gentlemen. That's my take on the weekend. Uh, hope you guys are able to experience that event with your young men just like, just like I did with my son. Um, I hope to be able to come back Hopefully we'll have it in Georgia here one day so you guys can come down here also. I know we do not have the mountains like you guys do. Uh, hopefully uh, hopefully uh, we'll get to do it somewhere in North Georgia so we'll have a little bit of what y'all have. It's little baby mountains compared to y'all's. But um, happy to speak with you. Uh, hope to hear from all of you soon. Uh, God bless. Hey, what's up, Stronger Man Nation? Phil Castle here I'm with my uh, with my awesome uh, my awesome kiddos here. And hey, my oldest, Caden, and I just had the incredible opportunity to be part of Cycle Three Man Card. And you know, it's a week later, and it is extremely hard still to put into words uh, how incredible this experience was. Uh, the the purpose and intentionality that has been thought through and executed with absolute excellence is astounding to me. Uh, it, it is. Uh, it felt like every single minute was not just thought through and planned, but was fully optimized across the entire experience. There was literally no rock that was left unturned. Uh, you know, during my years of uh, family ministry and 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 just uh, in in the church, I've had the experience. I've had the opportunity to be a part of several rite of passage experiences. But but man card. I, I, I seriously mean this. When I think and reflect on this. Man card made all of those
quite frankly looked like kindergarten class. It was unreal. It was so awesome. I've been talking all week long. People have been asking me, hey, how was it? How was it? And I don't even know where to begin. I, I just almost am like speechless how awesome it was. So I was asked to uh, maybe provide a takeaway. So here's my takeaway. You know, given the current cultural and uh, societal landscape, fathers, we, we have to move into the breach. Our society as a whole, including many churches, are not healthy right now. The passivity and, quite frankly, the weakness of men, it's cancerous. Uh, and, and, and the family is the fabric that holds society together. You know, that says healthy families equal healthy churches. Healthy churches equal healthy communities. Healthy communities equal healthy states. Healthy states equal healthy nations. Pastor and author Tim Kimmel reminds me of what he, what he said uh, uh, several years ago. He said, our homes are the single most strategic influence in our society. The strength of our family determines the health of our churches, the impact of evangelism, the spread of world missions, the conscious of our political leadership, the character of our military and police force, the heart of our educational system, the ethics of our scientific community, and the morality of our arts and entertainment industry. This all starts with us men, the fathers. We're called as the spiritual leaders of our homes. And a, and a quick look at society tells us that far too many fathers, even including inside of the church, are abdicating that role. They're either physically absent and or relationally unengaged. But the men of Stronger Man Nation and who are part of Mancard, not so. Not so. We're being and will be the pillars and catalysts for our nation. And after experiencing Mancard, I 100% believe that to be true. I believe it is an incredible movement um, for such a time as this. I believe that with my whole heart. I, I believe this. I've been thinking about this as what it's like, right? How do you describe it? I'd say man card and the men that represent it. It was incredible. You instructors and you men who are part of it, uh, uh, amazing. Like I would, I, I'd go into battle with you in a heartbeat. I'm in battle with you. Uh, and, and I think this, man card is like a, like a weapon of mass destruction against the evil enemy. Soldiers are being forged like iron and are being sent out equipped to kill the dragon and win the girl. Uh, you know what I think? I think we should do an Attaway. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. Here's for you, Stronger Man Nation. We're going to give you an Attaway. And I hope you feel that through this, through this video, we're piercing your soul uh, with what you so rightly deserve. And we may be in Minnesota because we've got to get walls out of this state. But we are in the fight with you. We are in the breach. And we love you all. And we, can't, we are just so grateful to be a part of it. So here you go. This is for you. Hey, Stronger Man! Hey, Stronger Man! Go, Stronger Man! Go, Stronger Man! And we! And we! And we! And we! Shout out to Instructor Frank who taught us that at the man card. I hope what you're hearing is there's a surge that is rising amongst fathers and sons. And I hope you heard this too. This is from Peter Gallo in California, from, from all three of them really. What they're impressed most by were the men here, and w w which, is, which is you. And uh, because no movement, uh, no movement gets started without the men. Uh, you are the force behind it, and your generosity was able to make that happen. So uh, I want you to hear that and receive that. And thank you for that. Thank you for your generosity, for being able to uh, provide uh, um, outlets like that for us to serve these young men and fathers with. Um, and as, uh, as the amazing thing is this is the hub and is working. Men are coming from uh, multiple places in the United States. Uh, and we may, have, we may have gotten a victory federally, but we still got a, a fight statewide. So I want to invite up uh, three men from uh, here uh, that you know of them. Uh, Mike Young, he had two sons in it. Uh, Carlos Rodriguez, he had two sons in it. And Bill Glace, he had one son in it. I want, to help, I want you to help me invite them, welcome them to the stage. Mike Lose and Bill, hurry up, hurry, hurry, hurry. <clears throat> They're going to share with you some of the, the, uh, their testimonies. We're going to go in this order. Uh, Mike, Lose, and Bill. So MLB, we decided that was better than BLM. So, yeah. I gotta put my readers on. <laughs> Welcome, Mike Young. Thanks for having me, Terry. 
So I wrote down some, a few thoughts. So I've got to put my old man readers on. Uh, man card is powered by an exceptional team. This group is more than capable. They are passionate men of faith who teach the gospel, not just with knowledge, but from their hearts. Their, authentic, their authenticity and dedication leave a lasting impact, helping young men grow in ways that are both meaningful and transformational. Within my family, the men are at different points in their journey toward manhood, each facing their own unique milestones. The man card experience has added tremendous depth and color to these personal journeys by connecting me with men I respect both professionally and personally. Through man card, I've witnessed growth in my own sons and those around me. Titus and Squire attended with me, but Lincoln and uh, Walker beat him up. <laughs> uh, I've seen an increased confidence and seriousness in how they approach their daily tasks. It's no longer about just getting things done. It's about embracing responsibility with the mindset, I'm ready for this and I will gladly bear the weight. That shift in perspective is invaluable. Mancard is not only for the young men navigating their path to adulthood, it is also a powerful experience for fathers an opportunity to share victories, challenges, and insights with other like-minded dads. What's truly remarkable is how we discover that many of our struggles are shared, and we're not alone. The brotherhood of fathers coming together to support each other is one of the most valuable aspects of Mancard, and one that I cherish. The beauty of Mancard is the way it gathers Christian fathers in a season of life when we are all laser-focused on raising young men, specifically those between 14 and 17. This shared stage of life makes the group dynamic, incredibly intentional, as we unite around the mission of guiding the next generation of dragon slayers. We're not just talking about the struggles, we're actively building each other up in pursuit of helping our sons grow into strong, confident, faithful men. Mancard is more than a program, it's a community, a fellowship, a movement that unites fathers and sons in a journey of faith, growth, and shared purpose. And that's what makes it so sweet. Thank you. So I'm Carlos, I'm not much of a speaker, but um, the weekend was awesome. Everything was intentional. The, there was not a single uh, thing, uh, teamwork. Uh, there wasn't anything that was not planned or there was a purpose. Um, Tyrus, my oldest, and Riker, my younger boy, both went. And I was very proud of them, just watching them navigate the weekend and show grit throughout, and teamwork. Um, and then as a father, um, <clears throat> I think um, the thing that kind of impacted me the most, or just impacted me overall, was um, the first night when they, you know, you grow up with your kids, kind of like taking care of them, making sure they're not, you know, making sure that they're, they're good, uh, making sure that they're not wrong. When they're wrong, you, you kind of, as a father, um, are very protective. And so that first night when they went into the river uh, and watching that, there was a part of me that was like, <clears throat> there was a part of me that was like, um, the, way they were, the way they were lined up, my son was in the back. And when they went into the river, um, there was a little bit of chaos that happened um, and uh, that, caused, that caused my son to be in the water like a lot longer. And as a father, I was looking at that and I was like, my son is being wronged. Um, you guys need to get your act together. You're hosing my kid. <laughs> but, <laughs> but probably similar to, you know, watching Jesus on the cross, you know, being um, wrongly accused um, similar feelings, probably. Um, but it was uh, at that point that I realized um, this is good for my boys. Um, and um, they're going to be in charge of their families. They're going to be in charge of slaying dragons for their families until their kids, similar to what Carrie said, until their kids um, are old enough to continue. So it was an awesome weekend. Thanks to all the guys that led it, the guys that I work with. Thanks for being vulnerable. Thanks for being authentic and, and real.
Good morning, men. I'm Bill Glace, father of a stronger man, or stronger man, Brody Glace. To get started, the first word that comes to my mind from Project Man Card is hope. Hope for my son, hope for his future family, hope for the Glace family, both down the line and up the line. Hope for our valley, hope for our state, hope for our nation. Fathers are every son's first hero, for better or worse. By the mercy and grace of God alone, I am daily being made into a stronger man, one who my son can follow. This past weekend, my son gained 20 more heroes to follow, heroes that are top brass instructors that only God could put together. C.S. Lewis said, since it is so likely they will meet cruel enemies, let them at least have heard of brave knights and heroic courage. Otherwise, you are making their destiny not brighter, but darker. While C.S. Lewis was referring to reading good books about brave heroes and courage, my son, both this cycle, or excuse me, our sons, both this cycle and the last two have been able to live in the actual presence of brave knights and heroic courage men who are pushing back against the enemy's counterfeit of a stronger man. I want to thank the instructors for their families, for their conviction and dedication and taking on this serious and heavy calling of making a stronger man. Brody, this past weekend I saw that I wasn't giving you enough weight. I didn't fully understand the capacity you were armed with to take on and lean into the calling of being a stronger man. You were ready for far more than I could have imagined. I watched you overcome fear of failure, fear of physical pain, fear of not leading well, fear of not being enough. I witnessed your confidence grow. Not in yourself, but in Christ, in you. I love you, son. I'm so very proud of you. Hope for a nation. Hope for a nation. Here's what I want to do. Six forty two. I'm going to have you guys huddle up. We got a few extra minutes here before we leave, but here's what I want you to do. If there is an obvious dragon that has got you pinned or is, is needing to be addressed ASAP in your life, in your home, in your heart, if there is, if there is a dragon that you need to slay this month, if there's one that you've let slip, let slide, we can address that this morning. Address it this morning with some men around you. Say, here's where I need prayer. Here's what I got going on. Would you pray for me? Okay? Where do you need to pick up the call, the weight of manhood in your life, in your family, around you? Right? The way, the way that we continue to move forward, one man getting stronger at a time. One father, one son, one generation to the next. How many know it's small decisions? It's the moments when nobody's there and nobody sees and the words that come out of your mouth and the attitude that you foster in your heart and how you respond to the trials, how you respond to the setbacks, to the weight, to the hardship, how you respond in those moments. That is where God is wanting to strengthen us as men. Amen? And so... Uh, that's what we've got for us this morning. You encouraged by the testimony of these men? Amen. So here's what, here's what, here's what I want you to do. Uh, I want you to huddle up. we got time. So listen, if, if you got to roll, you can roll. You know that's the kind of rule over here, 0600. But here's what I want you to do. Circle up. Three, four, five men, whoever you are. you got your guys right there. Circle up. Take, take a couple of minutes. Put your hand on the shoulder. What's one thing, one area we can pray for each other before we blast off this morning? And so that's the first thing. Is any, any dragon that needs slayed, anything that you need to, uh, uh, you know, pick up 
Here's something you need to pick up this month. Identify anything you need prayer for. Connect with the men in that little huddle. Step into this. Is where, this is like the, the weight room, the gym. You say, well, I don't pray out loud. Well, that's what stronger men do. We learn how and we do reps and we pick up the, that, that dumbbell and, we, and we, that's where we start. This is where we learn. This is where we practice. Amen? It's an opportunity to do that. And then, come on, let's just thank the Lord and continue to pray for our nation that God will continue to revive men and wake up men and lead the way. Amen? Amen. So, come on, let me invite you to stand up. I'll pray for us. Then you're going to get in your huddles. You're going to get in your groups. But listen, group up. Group up. Pray together. Pray for the men in your circle. I don't want anybody leaving here without being prayed for. All right? Even if it's just for God to strengthen you this month. This month, we got Thanksgiving coming up. How can you love and bless and lead and serve your family? But if you got a dragon, if you got a weight, a burden, something you're carrying, you don't leave here without saying, hey, would you pray for me? This is what I got going on. This is where I need to step it up. This is where I need to put the sword in the dragon this month. Um, and Carrie's standing here. There's one, one other quick thing. By the way, dad's in the room. If you've got a son, 14 to 17, or if you will, uh, next year, and you're like, how do I get on the, on the list? I want to get my son. I want to go through that, be a part of that. Contact Justin. Justin Kissel right here. Put your, we all know Justin. Here's Justin. He's right here in the front row. So Justin at GraceCityChurch.com. And uh, you send him an email or you connect. He'll write down your information here, get you on that list. How many know we got to, we, we can, we can fill these things up, get more fathers and sons through that experience of man card. Right? So you talk to Justin. That's your point of contact for that. Did you have something else, Gary? Okay, sweet, 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 sweet. All right, Lord Jesus, thank you for these men. Come on, Lord, strengthen us, strengthen the men. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise for what, you're, what we believe you are, have started and are doing in this nation. We do. Father, we pray for our nation. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to raise up men to lead in states and in cities. Thank you for those men of righteousness, those men of truth in positions of leadership in our nation. We thank you for President Trump. We pray for his protection. We pray for our nation. Lord, we pray for those others that he will be appointing and putting in positions of leadership. We pray for wisdom. We pray for holiness and righteousness to spread. But we pray, Father, that men will continue to step up in, the, in their role of leadership in their home, in their town, in their church. Thank you for bold pastors. Thank you for Pastor Josh. Thank you for others, Lord, willing to speak up, speak out, clear and courageous to strengthen the hearts of men who are leading your people and leading in families, Lord. So we thank you for the work you're doing right here in Grace City Church, and we pray for these men. We pray for our coworkers, neighbors, our friends. We pray for our families, and Lord, would you continue to strengthen and build men right here where we are, including the men in this room. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.